What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and uh, this is the first week that we're going to be streaming with a new uh, setup entirely uh, based on Wayland. So if things quickly start crashing or lagging out or whatever, it's totally my fault. Uh, I would definitely appreciate some feedback on whether the audio and video are in sync, because I'm not sure what the situation is there. But uh, kind of curious to see how this is all going to play out. So you're here with me for the first time. Let's try it. Let me turn this off. Anyway, uh, as always, this is the Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever thing I've come up with for the week. And this week I've been playing with uh, the Sway compositor for Wayland, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, because it's uh, it's interesting. I think it's going to be fun. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I literally just synced this Sway config to this machine that you're looking at right now five minutes ago, applied it with Geeks Home, and it's working. So fingers crossed that it doesn't completely crash in a moment, in a minute. Uh, anyway, let's say hello to the few people who are who are here so far. Uh, we have uh, Valentino in Perton, uh, Peter Almovedia, Benoit, Richard Davis, Luis, uh, Gunn, uh, Daigo, Jeff, Case, uh, Alejandro, Ashraz, and GK Sudo. Uh, GK Sudo says Emacs PGTK. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, Jeff says, looking forward to see how you lock tags of specific uh, screens with Sway. It's actually not that hard. We can take a look at that too. Hello to Asher Z5. And Arpana. I missed you there before, I think. Cool. Peter says, apparently it's the season to switch to Wayland. Well, maybe. Because, um, well, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, hello to uh, Thokal and David Adair. Thanks a lot for being here, folks. Uh, let's just go through the updates real quick. Uh, nothing really that special today because I've been too focused on trying to update my configuration. Hello to Minas Mazar. Uh, so I'll just mention again, uh, if you haven't joined the Fediverse yet, um, definitely check out the emacs.ch or fostadon.org instances. Uh, it's a nice place where a lot of uh, Emacs and Geeks users are hanging out and chatting about whatever's on their mind. So if you're interested in, uh, in checking that out, definitely look at one of those instances and follow me on uh, fossadon.org. I'm uh, David Will at fossadon.org. Uh, so keep a, keep a look out for me there. Um, I need to be posting more. I haven't really been posting so much lately, mainly because I've been super busy. But um, maybe I'll try to make a better effort on that coming up soon here. Also, if you want a cool way to support the System Crafter channel, uh, you can buy a copy of Mastering Emacs. Mastering Emacs is a really in-depth book about Emacs. It goes through a lot of the things that we really haven't covered in depth on this channel yet. So uh, you will get quite a lot of value out of checking out that book and also the website that goes along with it. There's a lot of uh, free blog posts there that Mickey uh, Peterson has written over the years that have been helpful to a lot of people. Uh, but the book is great, and if you use this link, uh, masteringemacs.org slash r slash systemcrafters, a portion of the sale goes to support the channel. Really appreciate Mickey uh, for setting that up uh, to help us out here. Um, also, there's a link on the systemcrafters.net website for other ways to support the channel if you're so interested in, in doing that. And uh, definitely the support that uh, I get from you all helps me to spend more time making content, working on free and open source projects, and just doing things for the community. So I really appreciate all of you who have supported so far. Um, let's see, got some questions in the chat here. Uh, Data Monoid says, why not Xmonad? Well, I'm, I'm trying Wayland. I don't think Xmonad works on Wayland. Uh, Kainola says, uh, I want to say that I'm a philosophy grad student. And you're a big part of why my workflow is now entirely in Emacs. That's cool. That's awesome. There's a lot of people who are, um, not like computer science majors or programmers who get into using Emacs. I think that's really cool. I think it just speaks to the, the power of, Emacs as a platform, not just for programming, but also for writing and thinking and just, you know, being productive on the computer. So really cool that uh, a lot of people in different fields are also getting into Emacs. Ashra says, an idea for a System Crafters mini series, forming and monitoring a habit with, with some package might be useful for the Mastodon habit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
Maybe so. Arpana says, I'm wearing my System Crafters hoodie now. That's cool. Awesome. Richard Davis says, I'm a music composition student. That's cool. So uh, let's see. What, what kind of music theory knowledge can I pull out right now? Let's talk about uh, C flat. Uh, Gun says, X monad is Haskell. Too few parentheses. Yes, that's one of the main reasons why I never really got into uh, X monad. I'm kind of allergic to Haskell. I don't really have a good reason for why. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a, a scheme type person, list type person. Alejandro is a teacher? Yes. Alejandro is definitely a teacher. Fellow worker John says, my favorite musical note is C sharp. Uh, don't I know C sharp? Yeah, I know C sharp. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, like block out that part of my life. I'm not really talking about, you know, anything bad about C sharp. I'm just saying I'm not really that interested. Uh, Ashra says, why why don't OOP programmers need glasses? Because they see sharp. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, Arpana says, how about a SICP series for the channel? Well, I don't know if I'm good enough to, uh, uh, to do that, but sure. Hello, Anton. And hello to Thanos. What happened with Qtile, Thanos says. Um, I never really used it. I, I, I was just like sort of using it as an opportunity to, to try out the high language. So uh, I'm not really interested in using Qtile. We'll talk about why I'm using Sway though. And hello to uh, to Hunter, uh, also known as Sector in System Crafters IRC. Ashra Z says, do you still use EXWM? Not as of today. Ashra says, I've been bashing my head against CMake plus CPAC within WSL for the last three hours. I'm broken. Yes. Well, you know, that sounds like a, a real headache. So anyway, let's get to the topic. Um, today, we're going to take a look at the Sway compositor for Waylon. Um, we've talked about Wayland before in the past. I think we made a really poor attempt to try out a couple of Wayland compositors in a stream, I don't know, last year sometime. I don't remember when it was. Um, but I decided to, to jump back into it because uh, I had been using Erbsluft. I know I'm saying that wrong, whatever. Uh, Erbsluft window manager, I don't know, what was it, last year, first half of last year. And I liked it. It was fine. Um, and I, I left EXWM at the time because of just various issues I was having. I felt like it wasn't very stable. I was having trouble um, with streaming and, you know, EXWM either crashing or hanging while I was streaming. So I can't really deal with that. I need something a little bit more stable. So I switched to Erbsluft Window Manager for a while. And I got really annoyed with the fact that I couldn't pin workspaces to specific displays because I, I really important part of my workflow is that a couple of my workspaces are on the, my, my main screen and some others are on my secondary screen. And I have to be able to predict which screen my focus and my uh, workspace is going to be on whenever I hit my workspace sw uh, sh switching keys. Excuse me. Arab Sleuth does not follow that philosophy. If you switch to a workspace on one display, then it might show up on, a, on another display later or something. It's really weird how it works. I could never find a good way to get it to work uh, the way I wanted. So after a while, I kind of got fed up with it and I went back to EXWM. Um, it's probably been about, about a month, two months now. I don't know how long it's been, but the same old problems coming, coming back to bite me. Even when I'm doing normal work, I'm running commands in eShell and it's like slowing down my Emacs session because eShell is very tightly tied to the Emacs you know, event loop or whatever you want to call it. And I just can't work like that. I, I really need to have access to the rest of my computer while Emacs is hung up doing something, you know, be able to switch to a browser or some other program, whatever. So I decided maybe it's time to try out Wayland finally and really, you know, give it a shot and see what happens. So um, Sway, as far as I know, is the most stable and I guess you could say featureful for what I want, uh, Wayland Compositor. So that seemed like the, the obvious choice. Also, the RDE project by Andrew Tropin uses Sway as the main um, compositor and window manager. So, you know, per perfectly good idea to try it. Um, 
So what, what a compositor is in Wayland parlance is basically a program that handles everything that uh, the X window system used to do. So X window system or X org is basically a client server type model where the, the X org session is a server and the windows that you're running are clients and there's just some way that all of it works through some kind of protocol. I'm not an expert on it. I'm just sort of repeating things that I've read. Um, and it, the way that it's designed is really good for being able to run applications over the network, but you know it's not really high performance for doing local app, running local applications, especially if they're like you know hardware accelerated graphics applications, like many things are today. Um, but the 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 ecosystem for that has been around forever. As you know, a lot of really good tools for it. And you can do things like uh, have a window manager like EXWM that uh, makes it possible to, to you know, control your entire desktop environment with, uh, with Emacs. So really cool that you can do all these things. But Wayland is kind of the future in terms of what is going to happen with the desktop environment in Linux. You know, Xorg is staying around for a while because so many things use it and people are comfortable using it. And there are also various issues with Wayland that have prevented people from um, switching over to it for a while. But... More and more people are using it without really knowing it. You know, I think Ubuntu and a lot of other sort of you know mainstream distribution distributions are using Wayland by default now. So the scales are gradually tipping towards the direction of Wayland. So for me, it's good to sort of see what this ecosystem is like to understand the different tools that you might want to use and just to see if I can get a better experience overall. And I will say, um, my experience is better right now than it was with even, you know, other window managers in Xorg, like, you know, Epsluft and um, i3, etc., because of the way that Wayland works. Now, I said before that uh, Wayland does, or Wayland compositors do a lot more things. And what I mean by that is that they handle dealing with your displays, they handle dealing with your input devices. I mean, obviously they handle with handle dealing with rendering your windows and whatnot, but a lot of stuff is wrapped in wrapped up into the implementation of your Wayland compositor. Now, the, the folks who developed Sway, Drew DeVault, the, the guy who created SourceHut, being one of the people, I guess the, the lead developer of that project at, at the time, um, they not only did they develop Sway, but they also developed a library called WL Roots. And WL Roots is basically the foundation of almost all of the Wayland compositors today because it's very complicated to write one from scratch using the Wayland protocol. So many people are using WL Roots library to make Wayland compositors. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is that Sway is kind of like the furthest ahead because WL Roots was created for Sway and other compositors are now using it. But if you want to have like what you might consider the most fully featured Wayland experience right now, probably Sway is the best bet. There's a few other compositors out there that look really promising and cool. I'll probably try them out at some point, but for now, uh, Sway seems pretty good to me, uh, especially because it allows me to do the exact kind of workflow that I want, um, which let's say, well, I've been talking without writing anything down, but the two things that I really want to do is uh, pin workspaces to specific displays and also have a like a tabbed full screen-ish app experience because I, I live in Emacs primarily, either Emacs or a browser. That's the primary two places I'm at every all day long. I don't need to split the screen with uh, the window manager because I'm doing it with Emacs. There's no point in me having complicated window layouts with i3 or Sway or some other window manager because most of my work is in Emacs with Emacs own windows. So this is the, the sort of environment that I live in all day, just like full screen, more or less full screen application. I switch over to my browser tab or my browser workspace and I just load up Firefox and that's full screen also. And I'm mainly just switching back and forth between these all day, these two workspaces. So uh, i3 gives me the ability to do that. And I'm pretty happy with that part of it. Uh, probably a lot of the other sort of advanced window management functionality, I won't really use that much. I did use i3 quite often back in, well, let's say 2014, 2015 timeframe. I was quite a big fan of i3, but that's back before I got heavily into Emacs and then started using Emacs and its own window management internally for a lot of things. So uh, point being, if you're like me and you like the EXWM experience because you have sort of that whole full screen-ish Emacs kind of Emacs centered experience, 
then a window manager like Sway that kind of stays out of your way, gives you the ability to have these you know, apps take up the full screen, um, is probably gonna be pretty good for you too. And I think it's a good platform on which you can build uh, your, your workflow. And part of what we're gonna do today is take a look at how we could write a Guile scheme library to interface with Sway to dynamically customize it while you're using it by sending expressions to the REPL or just you know having a scheme file that, that calls into uh, all of the Sway uh, customization commands. Uh, now, I'm not saying that you can customize all of Sway using scheme. I don't exactly know if that's gonna be possible yet because there's some things that I kind of doubt that will be possible, but we'll, we'll try it out and see what happens. Um, but it might be an interesting way to uh, configure Sway. Now you could say, why are you not doing it with Emacs Lisp? Well, I don't know. I wanted to try Guile this time, uh, but the same approach would apply either to Scheme or to Emacs Lisp. Uh, we did a video or a stream like that in the past with Airbsluft where we configured it with uh, Emacs Lisp and that worked great. I think the same thing will happen here with, with Scheme. So we will uh, we'll check that out in a minute. Now that was a lot of talking. Let me see what people in the chat have been saying. Let's see, uh, fellow worker John says, I'm waiting until I switch from NVIDIA to AMD GPU before moving to Wayland. Now that, I, I don't really know what the status is on that at the moment, if, uh, if NVIDIA is a problem. I've heard things, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't really use NVIDIA, so I don't have a problem with that. Peter says, there's a lot of use of Emacs lately on the creative writing education side. That's cool, I like that. Gunn says, it's like the falls foliage blown around by the wind. I'm guessing you're referring to Erbsluft. Hello to Kit Carson. Uh, Peter says, I recently switched to Wayland also. I was already on i3, so Sway was a logical step. Yeah, the thing that I also should mention about Sway is that if you already use i3 or if you have an i3 configuration, Sway is intended to be basically a drop-in replacement for i3 where you could take your existing i3 config and I would say like 90% of it would work, but there's some extra stuff you might need to set up to have the best experience. Uh, Peter says, I'm still testing games, but I'm not that positive, need more data points. Yeah, I don't really game much on the computer. I'm, I have my Xbox here, so um, not really a, uh, a problem for me. Uh, GHI Shadow says, Vulkan renderer of WL Roots is awesome. I don't know if this one's using Vulkan, but uh, it must be, I guess. Vulcan is super performant though. Eric says, oh, let me see. Uh, the only problem I have with i3 at all is they require key cording. I dislike alt X, et cetera. I would prefer that stump WM allows which key sequences like Emacs. Yeah, um, you don't have that with, uh, with Sway or i3, that's for sure. Hunter says, Wayland has treated me well. Strange accessibility quirks not, notwithstanding. I'm actually surprised to hear that, you know, like, For them to have gotten accessibility working correctly, I guess it's more up to the apps that are using like GTK and whatnot uh, for that to work right. But uh, it's good that it works. Peter says, <coughs> "Excuse me." Peter says, I, "I use Nvidia. I have no particular problems. That's great." Oh, really? Peter says Sway has modes similar to Hydra's. Okay, yeah, that's true. There's like the resize uh, key maps. Uh, I don't have a good example of that right now. I don't think. Actually, let me just pull up my config and see what it says. Config, sway, config, um, resize. Do I have that? No, I don't have that in mind. Yeah, I don't want to import my bookmarks. Just leave me alone. Okay, so uh, sway configuration. Eh. There we go. Maybe that's the one I want to look at. Resize. So there's a concept of a mode, but I don't know if that's something you can create yourself, can you? Interesting, okay. Uh, Alejandro says, I've noticed that many games work better on Gnome Wayland than in Xorg. That's, that's cool, if so. I kind of thought that it might be the case, but I haven't really tried it. Okay. So back to it. Uh, what else do I want to say? Uh, oh, Sway is a Wayland compositor built on WL Roots. I don't really need to type all this out. You, you're, you're watching it. 
GK Sudo says, what put you off from using Stump WM? I just got back into EXWM and Tree Sitter. I can't break away from buffers and workspaces in Emacs. Well, Stump WM, I don't know, man. Um, I like the idea of Stump WM, but the execution has always been kind of lacking for me. I just feel like it doesn't work the way I expect it to. Maybe it's just my fault and I could have spent more time to figure it all out, but... Um, I, I think the last time I used Stump, which I really tried to because I was streaming with it for a while, I had similar problems actually as I did with EXWM. Like things were crashing or just not working correctly, had weird issues while I was streaming. So I just decided to not use it. But you know, may, same thing may happen here. I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm using such weird exotic software all the time that is my problem and not necessarily any individual program that I'm using. Um, yeah, whatever. I won't write any more here. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about what I've done so far with my configuration. Um, maybe it's best to pull up my Geeks Home config to show you which uh, programs I'm pulling in for all this. So uh, .files, David Will, Home Services, Desktop. I don't know how visible this is. I still need to adjust font size a little bit. So if the text is too small, let me know. Maybe I'll just go ahead and text scale increase. That's probably a bit better. So um, the relevant packages that I've installed for this setup, I'm not using Gamma Step yet, but Gamma Step is effectively Redshift for, um, for Wayland, which is basically, it adjusts your color temperature based on time of day, which can be useful if your eyes get sore using a computer when it gets dark outside, like mine. Uh, but Sway, Waybar, and some program called Fuzzle, which is kind of like Rofi. It's this app launcher thing, which is kind of nice. It's, you know, got the Rofi style thing where you just, you know, send parameters to the application to configure all the colors and everything. And uh, it, it just shows the right stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but that's sort of like one of the, the, the big benefits of Sway so far, because the compositor has all this stuff built in for handling inputs, handling outputs, etc. Even setting the background. I don't need programs like Fe or a render or auto render, uh, even X set. A lot of this stuff I don't need anymore um, because there's all these separate tools that do a, a lot of these things, which is fine, really. I mean, it's fine to have a bunch of uh, individual smaller tools that you put together. That's sort of like the Unix philosophy, but it is more moving parts. It's more things you have to configure. If you can reduce the number of things you need to configure and just do it in one place, then you're sort of better off, in my opinion. So, um, so Sway, Waybar, Fuzzle, and oh, and Dunst. I'm, I'm using Dunst for uh, displaying notifications. I'm not using Polybar. Um, Waybar is actually quite nice, pretty configurable. You can also use CSS to configure the styling, which I find um, not as horrifying as it sounds. It's actually pretty convenient to use that. So. Uh, it's, it's it's very, very nice um, to, to have all that. Let me get into the config file. So for Sway, um, this is similar to, well, okay. So there's, there's two different sort of schools of thought when it comes to these kind of um, more esoteric tiling window managers and other similar kind of window managers. They don't necessarily have to be tiling window managers. One is they have their own configuration file format. Uh, which is the case for i3 and Sway. There's a particular format here that you can see on the screen. The other is like BSPWM and Erbsluft Window Manager, which both use like shell scripts to uh, configure them. And you're basically calling the, uh, the IPC program for the Window Manager to, dis to communicate with the running process. So you can have a file that looks like this. In fact, I can probably show you my um, Erbsluft configuration to show a comparison. Here we go. Just as a an interesting point. Both of these look like there's, you know, a bunch of configuration lines, but for Sway, there's this bind sim um, keyword, I guess. And this is part of the syntax of this configuration file. On the other side here for Erbsluft, you have HC, which is the actual Erbs client program that's being called because this is a bash script basically, and you're giving the key bind command to it. So this on the right side is actually kind of nice because it allows you to have control over how you uh, call the configuration commands. Uh, Sway has its own configuration file format, but 
it also does have one of these um, IPC programs called Sway Message, which allows you to uh, send commands to Sway. Like for instance, I can use this get outputs command and get information about my actual outputs for, um, for this machine. So this is sort of the interface we're gonna use for attempting to configure Sway using Guile. We're gonna be using this Sway command Sway, sorry, sway message command, <laughs> we're gonna shell out to that to send it in, uh, basically what we want it to do for configuration of the running session. The only thing I don't know for sure is whether we can send these blocks like this input type uh, or some of the output uh, configuration information. We'll see about that. I, I hope it's possible, but. Uh, Ashra says, and there's also the category of window managers that you recompile to reconfigure like Xmon Xmonad and DWM. Yeah, those. Those are also kind of cool just because it encourages you to be more familiar with the code base, but eh. Am I pronouncing it correctly? I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, first name, last name says, can Sway be used as a manual tiling uh, manager like Stump or Erbsluft? Uh It is a tiling, manual tiling manager. Uh, there are plugins, I think, that will, well, not really plugins, like a configuration pack that will allow you to do automatic tiling, but I've never used one. I don't really know what it's, don't know what it's like. Um, Alejandro says, could it be possible to write an EXWM clone for Guile with WL roots? Well, one thing I would like to try at some point is to write an actual uh, Wayland compositor with Guile or with a scheme of some sort, probably Guile, so that we can have a scheme configurable compositor. Now that's a tall order. It's a lot of work. It'd be cool to do it. I don't know if I have time to do that because I don't have any time for anything these days. But um, that's what I would do if I had the time. Now, doing an EXWM clone would sort of imply that it would be driven by Emacs. And uh, without Guile Emacs, that probably wouldn't be possible. However, there is someone working on an EXWM-like compositor for Emacs. So I don't remember the name of that project, probably somebody will mention it in the chat, but there was a, a talk about it at EmacsConf 2022. So uh, if you're interested in that, which I am, I am also interested in it, but that project seems really early on. I don't really know what the state is right now, but uh, it is possible that we might have an EXWM-like Wayland compositor for Emacs in the near future. So that would be nice. I, I wouldn't say no to using that for sure, because you know, EXWM, EXWM was very nice. I liked having the full integration with Emacs. It's just that the instability was definitely a problem. Case says, I miss WM2. Wow. I don't know that I ever really used that one. Let's see. All right. SSEWM, System Crafter Scheme Emacs Window Manager. That sounds great, actually. Okay. Um, let me just drive through this configuration a little bit more just to show you what's in here. Um, so, normal key bindings, you can set fonts, blah, blah, blah. That's not really that special. But uh, the thing that is a bit different than i3, at least, is the fact that you are configuring your uh, screen outputs, your displays, inside of the Sway configuration. So, uh, all of these output lines are, they, they all have their own sort of function. Like for instance, this one allows you to set the background for all of your displays to whatever file you want. And you can say whether, whether you want it to be stretched or filled or centered, that kind of thing. So no more external application for setting your background. You can just do it this way, which is kind of nice. Um, the reason why I say that is because normally when you start up your desktop environment if you're using one of these window managers sometimes your background doesn't show up until later because that program has to run at some point and uh it, it sort of comes in after the after the screen has already been displayed so your your screen comes up you see sort of like the frame of the the window manager and then later your background comes up and then later your applications come up at least in this case the background is set sort of by default at the beginning uh, also, interesting thing is you can easily set the scale of your screens uh, by referencing the name of the screen directly. Now, I will tell you, if you're used to using XRander and you know what the name of your screen is with XRander, you should definitely check out the output of that sway message dash T get underscore outputs command because the names for 
outputs or displays in Wayland is different. I don't know if that's a WL Roots thing or a Wayland thing or what, but usually these DP display port output names for me are like DP2-3 or something, but now it's seven and eight. So I don't know. The nice thing though, is that if you have multiple machines with different displays with different names, you can actually have output configurations for all of those different screens together here. And it doesn't really matter. Wayla or Sway just sort of, you know, ignores them if, if the screen is not available at the moment. Um, also, you can set resolutions with this output command. I don't do that because I'm just letting it use whatever the natural resolution of the display is. And then the scale factor helps me out with the uh, scaling up because um, pretty much all my dis displays are uh, high DPI. So I have to scale them to look a little bit better. Um, so that's it for configuring outputs. We'll talk about setting up uh, workspaces on outputs in a minute. Also, we have the uh, input configuration. So uh, there's the ability to set up, you know, the keyboard stuff. And this is one place where you don't need to have XKB or X mod map to do things like switch your uh, caps lock with control. You can just use XK XKB options, control, no caps here to switch uh, caps lock with control, which is nice. And you can also say which keyboard layouts that you support. I have the US keyboard and the Greek keyboard here. So um, very easy to set up a keyboard configuration. You can also set up things like your, your mouse, your uh, touchpad, your track point even, I think. Uh, a lot of stuff like that without, uh, <laughs> um, without having to resort to using other programs. So that's kind of like what I was saying before. Like you have to know how to configure all these other things like XKB, et cetera, to set up an XORG based environment. Whereas with this, you just have a lot of the common things just right here in the same configuration, which is really nice. XK, XKCD options. So, uh, what else? Uh, one other thing I've noticed, at least in my case, is that font sizes feel a lot more consistent to me across different screen sizes with, uh, Wayland and, or at least with Sway. Um, at least the font sizes I'm setting in Emacs don't seem to require like such a huge difference in uh, the font sizes I'm setting in Emacs for different faces on different machines because there was like a really wide difference between them. In fact, let me see if I can pull up my per system settings file. I don't know if any of this stuff is actually interesting. So let me know if, if I'm boring you to death just telling you about my configuration. So I have my per system settings file, which is just something that I made. Don't Don't read too much into it. Uh, the idea being that in Emacs, I want to uh, configure certain values differently for different machines. So like the acid burn machine has one setup, DaVinci has a setup, et cetera, blah, 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 whatever. But what I want to call out is I have these three font size settings for the default face, the variable pitch face, and the fixed pitch face. Um, these I've invented all these names. It's nothing special for Emacs. It's my own thing. So. This is the font size I'm using for my day-to-day -day machine, 110 for default face, 120 for variable pitch face. Um, you can see here for Phantom, which is a 4K screen, what I used to have was enormous font size, 240, 260, 230. That's insane to have a font size that big. I don't know why it was necessary, but in Xorg, I had to, because I had a high DPI screen and the way I had everything set up, I had to jack up the font size is super huge to be legible especially for streaming. But that's not really the case anymore because uh, with, with uh, Wayland, at least this is the font setting on my main machine, which I'm not showing right now. And then for this machine that we're currently on, it's basically the same. So there's not such a big, huge variance in uh, size anymore. It's, I'm guessing it's pixel size gun. Um, but still, it, it seems more reasonable. I don't know, maybe it's the scaling factor that's being applied by Wayland that makes it a little bit more close to the right size to be to begin with. I don't know. But that was just what's something else worth mentioning that I noticed today. All right, so binding, doing key bindings is pretty easy. You have bind sim. Uh, this dollar mod is actually a variable that's been set right here inside of the configuration that's set to mod four, which is the super key or the Windows key on your keyboard. Um, so just a lot of standard key bindings, kind of Vim style, HJKL, you know, movement keys, et cetera. Nothing that's special to mention here. Um, the next thing that's worth mentioning is the, the app launcher that I've mentioned before, this fuzzle uh, program. I'm kind of just setting a bunch of settings just through the command line here. 
And uh, what this is doing actually is, is binding uh, uh, super space to the exec command of Sway. And that what that does is call out to an external, external program, uh, this fuzzle program in this instance, and then all these uh, parameters just go get sent to the fuzzle program whenever it gets launched. So I don't have to have an extra configuration file for fuzzle. I just pass all these parameters to that program whenever uh, I invoke it with this key binding and it, it just shows up like this, which is great because it doesn't require yet another configuration file that I have to place on my machine somewhere. Uh, you can set up a config file for this program if you want to, but uh, I find that it's better that if you don't have to, then there's no real point to do it other than just having another file that you have to symlink into the right place from your .files folder. Um, Sway has uh, gaps configuration. So if you've ever used i3 before or other tiling window managers, you probably know this concept of gaps, which is basically this gap around windows um, that are on the screen. It's not necessary. Some people don't like them. I kind of like it a little bit for an aesthetic thing, uh, just to have a little bit of an outline on uh, windows. But if you're used to EXWM, then probably you'll just turn gaps off entirely. But that is something you can set up. And it does give you, you know, the ability to um, have a tabbed interface. If I move this browser over to the dev workspace, now I have this tab up here, uh, Emacs on the left and then the browser on the right. So you, I can switch between those really easily with the um, super HJKL keys, basically. And then I can move that back to the browser uh, workspace if I want to. So um, that is sort of like what I was doing with Erbsluft, where I had sort of like a full screenish tabbed interface for certain things. Like if I want to run, let's say, GNU image manipulation program here, um, it will pop up as a tab here and I can easily jump back and forth between them. I find that to be quite convenient because I don't want to have to like have a floating window around, but I also don't want to have to put this on a separate workspace. It's kind of nice to have just a tab that I can jump to whenever I need to. So uh, I do quite like that. Um, also for workspaces, you can set named workspaces. And here's the important part for determining which screen that uh, your workspaces get pinned to. There's a workspace command where you can say what the workspace is. And in this case, I'm setting uh, like, let's say workspace one to dev, which you can see up here. And uh, there's a output sort of sub command, or this is how you configure what output the workspace goes to by saying output. And then I'm using this primary variable and then the laptop variable. So. If you go back up here, you'll see I set primary to be the list of the names of the primary displays for the different machines that I use this configuration on. So the DP7, DP8 are actually for one machine. I won't go into why that's the case. And then HDMI A1 is for this machine that you're looking at right now. And then laptop is just the normal EDP1 that you'll see for uh, many uh, modern laptop displays because it's like a virtual display port device. So with those two things set, what I'm actually doing here is saying that um, this sort of list is priority order. So I'm saying that for a given workspace, I want it to try to put the workspace on this display, this display, this display, and then this display in order. So the first one it finds will put the workspace there whenever the, the screen configuration changes. That's also another nice thing. Display configuration automatically updates whenever you plug in or unplug a device. That's something you have to have like extra programs for or extra scripts for oftentimes in X work based configurations. For me, I was using auto render to save display configurations so that whenever I plug my laptop back into my docking station, I can hit a script and then call auto render to set up all the displays correctly. Sway can basically do that for you. So for me, that's a big benefit to not have to deal with that headache every time I unplug or plug my laptop in because I do kind of move around a bit during the day. You know, like I like to sit at my desk, have my computer plugged in, but sometimes I go downstairs with my laptop or I go somewhere else. And if I unplug it, I want it to instantly be set up the right way, move all those other workspaces back onto the laptop display, et cetera. And then when I come back and plug it back in, it puts all the sort of big screen workspaces back on the correct screen, basically. So, um, so that's basically how you do that. You just do that with the uh, workspace command right down here. So some of my workspaces only go to the laptop. Some of them go to either the primary display or the laptop. It just really depends on which, uh, which workspace I'm dealing with. And I, I don't have too many workspaces because of the way that I work. I, I'm in Emacs for like 90% of things that don't require a browser. 
like, you know, I'm using Dear Ed, I'm using, you know, eShell or VTerm. I don't need other programs. I don't need other things flo floating around. So I only need one sort of main working uh, workspace. And then inside of Emacs, I'm using tab bar mode to have sort of sub workspaces inside of Emacs. So um, yeah, I, I don't need that many external workspaces for, for that reason. Okay. Uh, nothing else really that that important here to look at. Uh, we have some styling things like, you know, client focused, client unfocused, and then the colors that are necessary for that. We won't go into that right now. Maybe we'll cover it in a minute when we start looking at uh, configuring it with Guile. Uh, Gunn says, uh, these hex numbers, are these color codes? Yes, they are color codes. It's RGBA. So the, the first two characters are red, then green, then blue, then alpha. Uh, Gun says, I3 can distribute apps onto workspaces based on their X class. Yeah, Sway can do that too. I haven't got that set up yet, but uh, it is something I will do because I want Spotify to go to workspace three and I want OBS to go to workspace four, things like that. So um, it's something you could definitely do with Sway. I, I also will mention that um, Sway does have a good manual. If you're in eShell, you can type man five Sway and then it will pull it up in man mode. Uh, so that it's easy to take a look at the documentation inside of Emacs when you're working on your config. I found this quite useful today whenever I was uh, walking through the stuff that I needed to put together. So let's see, um, what is it called? Assign. So the assign command that's in i3, it's right here. So the thing that you expect to see for that is, um, is there. GHI Shadow says, are you using a high refresh rate monitor? I don't... No, I, or if I if it is a high refresh rate monitor, I don't have it turned on. So uh, this is running at like just under. Uh, well, let's see. Interestingly, it says thirty hertz is the maximum on this screen, but it's probably because I'm piping the um, the display through a capture device. So this is a, my secondary machine that you're looking at right now, and the HDMI is going through a capture device and then coming into my uh, other laptop for streaming purposes. So that's probably why it's only 30 hertz right now, but I think it's it's like 59 point something uh, whenever I'm using it for real. 30 hertz hurts, yes, it's too slow in my opinion, but you do what you gotta do. All right, um, GK Suda says, integrating Emacs tab bar with Sway tabs would be neat. Um, yeah, that would be cool. I guess the way that you would do that is for each tab that you open or each workspace that you open, you would have to create a new Emacs frame and then a new Sway workspace. But that sort of defeats the purpose of tab bar mode in that case, I think. It's almost like Sway workspaces for Emacs, which is totally possible. Okay, so now that I've talked enough about that, let's look at how, well, actually, before I... I uh, I get that. Any questions in the chat about my configuration so far? I have not shown yet the Waybar config, so maybe I'll just really quickly show that as a um, as a way to close off the, the configuration discussion. So Waybar is kind of like Polybar in the sense that it has a lot of pre-configured uh, modules that you can pull into your configuration or your your panel configuration. So. Modules left and modules right. Uh, there's also a module center, so you can put things in the center of the display, like maybe if you want to put like what song you're listening to or something. But um, on modules left, left, I have Sway workspaces and Sway mode. Uh, like uh, Peter was mentioning before, there's a concept of modes in Sway, and I don't think I can show one right now because I don't have the binding set up, but if you turn on a mode, it will have like another little pop-up here in the, in the panel. On the right side, I have the system tray icons, the CPU status, uh, battery indicator, and the clock. And uh, all this is sort of done in a JSON style configuration format and super easy to use. Um, you know, the, the wiki for the Waybar repo has all the information you need on how to configure all these things, which is great. Uh, but the, the thing is different about Waybar than other bars I've seen is that they actually have a CSS based theming system, which if you're, you're familiar with CSS, uh, it actually does give you not all of CSS, but it gives you a, enough of it that you can do some pretty interesting things graphically with this uh, with this bar. Probably more more interesting than you could do with other bar implementations. So um, this is plain old CSS code, and they have selectors for various different things. Uh, a lot of these uh, hash name things here are 
uh, CSS classes effectively that are used by different modules. So you can theme uh, modules in specific ways, which is kind of nice. And then um, sort of the general configuration for the font size, et cetera. Uh, one other interesting thing about Waybar that I noticed is that you can say uh, that you can configure some of these settings specifically for a specific display. So maybe on your smaller display, you want to jack up the font size or decrease the font size of the font used for the panel. You can do that by using one of these selectors like this. So um, quite nice. I think it's pretty cool. I haven't spent a lot of time configuring this because I just wanted to get something basic working, but I might spend a lot more time with it. I know that um, RDE, Andrew Tropin's Geeks distribution effectively, uses Waybar and it looks really good actually the way that uh, Andrew has it set up there. Um, I think it's it's definitely possible to make a, a pretty cohesive desktop environment, fully custom desktop environment by spending some time learning how to customize Waybar correctly and then hooking it up to uh, even to Emacs. Uh, similarly to what I was doing with Polybar before, Waybar does have the ability to shell out to external commands to get text and whatnot to display inside of a module on the panel. So it's fully conceivable that you could have information from Emacs showing up in your Waybar panel. I'll probably try to do that at some point because I want to have like, you know, chat notifications and things showing up here, but uh, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Definitely possible to do that though. Maybe your mail indicator from MU4E, th these kinds of things. So um, that's it for sort of the, the various programs I have involved. But like I said, that's three programs that I'm using to replace maybe seven or eight at least that I was using before with the Xorg based setup, regardless of what window manager. Also, you don't need, you don't need a login manager. Um, I guess you don't really with Xorg either. You could use start X, but you can just use your regular TTY to log in and just run the sway command at the console and it just pulls up the, the whole environment. So that's, I'm thinking about doing that. I don't really need a login manager. In fact, it's sometimes better just to go straight from the uh, TTY because you can get all of the log output when something crashes and you have a better sense of what's happening uh, whenever your session goes wrong. So uh, kind of interesting that you can do that. You can just run Sway at the, at the terminal and boom, your, your screen comes up. So um, that's really cool. What else? You don't need an X session file. Um, yeah, you, you don't need a lot of things. So I feel like this is actually more minimal than other things that you could be using because there's sort of less moving parts and more you can do with, with one or two really good tools instead of having a whole bunch of them. Uh, Hunter says, what are you doing for notifications? I'm using Dunst for that. So that's, I guess, number four, program number four that I'm using. Uh, TUI says, 60 hertz hurts nowadays. 120 hertz feels so smooth for scrolling and less input latency. Well, Here's what I'm worried about. If I actually do start using uh, like a 120 hertz screen, it's gonna be like what happened when I started using high DPI screens is I'm never gonna wanna use a 60 hertz screen again. And it's gonna be a problem for my budget because I can't be buying computers purely for the reason that they have super high refresh rate. All right. So uh, that's that was an hour of me uh, praising Sway. Um, the last thing I'll say about Sway in this, context is that um, it feels like Sway is going to be really stable. Knowing the people involved with the project, I'm sure they're very, very hard lined on everything related to stability and performance. So it seems like a good platform to build on, especially if you don't have really complex needs for the window manager to do your window management. If you're a person who's in Emacs 90% of the time and in, in the browser for the rest of it, I think that Sway gets out of the way enough that you can probably build some pretty good automation for things. Um, maybe even having Sway key bindings that cause things to happen in Emacs, et cetera. So uh, I'm interested to experiment a bit to see how far I can take that. We'll see if it works. Let's see, DDV, what's that? Uh, Ashra says, unless you start to be a tech review channel, no thanks. I, you know, I don't really try enough tech. I'm just using Emacs all the time. <laughs> hey guys, David here, going to review Sway and talk about why Emacs is the Chad editor. Yeah, I'm not doing that, no thanks. Look, I, I got problems with the whole YouTube uh, persona and 
that kind of thing. So I, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a guy who likes making videos and streams about cool programs. So DT, is he, is he a review channel, technically speaking? I don't know. Ah, yes. I thought you were talking about like DDT, that uh, uh, poison they use for crops. Zmax is the chad. I don't know what Zmax is. All right, all right. So let's uh, take a look at how we might be able to use Guile to uh, mess with my configuration here because uh, it would be great if I could break it today. So let me jump to a project folder. Hello, Edward. Um, code uh, Guile Sway, let's say. Uh, Main.scm. Let's see if it lets me do that. Yeah, I've got some weird issue lately where I can't actually open a folder that doesn't exist yet. And I got a feeling that it's this buffer env, env package that I'm using. Let me try this another way. Um, I keep saying way, and I realize that I'm saying something that sounds like Wayland, and it just annoys me. Okay, Guile Sway. And then inside there, main.scm. All right, cool, define module. Why is this not coming up as scheme mode? Scheme mode, yo. Yeah, is Lispy working? We'll see. All right, uh, got, well, let's just call it Sway. And then, we don't need to pull any other modules in yet uh, until we start trying to shell it to a process. <laughs> Our Chad sponsor the FSF. I don't think they're gonna sponsor me. Okay. So, uh, first of all, let's take a look at what we need to do. Uh, guile uh, call shell process. I don't know exactly what the command is for that. Execute command line from Guile. Oh, one thing that I did notice that is a little bit annoying is some applications sometimes, like Firefox, um, the mouse cursor just goes missing. System. Uh, okay, so does it return the actual text output? Is it run synchronously? The system is called without arguments, return a Boolean, indicating command processor is available. Let's go to the Guile reference. Who are my sponsors? Uh, Guile, well, let's see, Guile operating system. I think there's like a section of the manual for that. Come on now. All right, all right, all right. Info system, Guile. Where are you? Guile reference, okay. Let's, let's do this the right way. So now, um, is it search? Uh, system, actually let's use uh, open paren system. Is it doing anything? Okay, programming in scheme. Scripting? No, 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 no. I'll have to go to the uh, index, maybe. Procedure index, how about that? Uh, system. Well, let's try uh, this, actually. Let's go up. POSIX, there we go. Cool. All right, so processes. System? No. System command. Execute command using the operating system's command processor. Value returned is commands exit status. Okay, so I need to find um, the way to get the output of a process. There may be a macro. Primitive exit. Okay, so maybe one of these exec commands. Environment variables, child and fork process, uh, pipes. I don't really want to be doing actual fork calls. Open pipe. Okay. I think this is what I had found before. Open pipe. Execute a command in a sub process with a pipe to it or from it with pipe or pipes in both directions. Okay. So maybe that's what we'll start with. We'll go up here and say, uh, use module ice nine P open. All right. 
Also, I'm going to um, pull up a geyser repl. Geyser. So we can do this all interactively as usual. Okay, so now I've got the module started up. Our sponsor for today is a System Crafter store. Yeah, the System Crafter store is doing nothing. Hey, Andrew, nice to see you. All right. So, um, VPN, no way, dude. We're not going to be hawking VPNs on this channel, even if it is my own VPN. Okay, so uh, we're going to use that. Uh, you got the hoodie, Edward. How is it? How is the hoodie? I have not ordered anything from that store yet, so I don't know what the quality is like. I'm hoping it's not terrible. If you buy anything from the new System Crafter store and it's terrible, return it. It's totally fine. Um, so... Ah, uh, Benoit says that Andrew had an interesting stream on fast feedback loop where he goes over using the REPL to get feedback. Yeah, um, I know that there was one. <laughs> it smells of vinegar. Well, that's, that's by design, actually. Okay, what, oh, I'm in the info buffer. That's why I'm missing what I'm looking for. Okay, so open pipe. Let's just give it a shot. Open pipe, um, and then mode. What is mode in this case? Hi, Russell. So sway message, eh, help, and then ah, I haven't seen that second stream yet. <laughs> Gun says, are the hoodies available in the Emacs from Hell color scheme? That's actually a, a good idea. Okay, so um. Command and mode. Okay, here are the modes. I believe I just want to open read. I want to be able to read from the pipe. Now, what does it give me back? Does it give me back a pipe object or a port? For an input pipe, child's standard output is uh, the pipe, and the standard input is inherited from, uh -huh, from current input port. For an output pipe, the child's standard input is the, wait, For an input pipe, meaning I can read from it. Yes. Child standard output is the pipe. Yes. And the standard input is inherited from current input port. <sighs> okay. I'll have to look at that. What does it return? Oh, is it just a port that returns? Let's 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 actually try that. Uh, I'm gonna execute this. Okay, it's an input port. So um, read. Well, come on now. Are you really a REPL if you can't give me information? Let's go to the REPL. Andrew says, I see your setup is getting closer and closer to what we have in RDE. I think we'll have to merge our setup soon. I don't know about that because uh, this is really primitive, but I am um, borrowing a lot of ideas from RDE, at least to get my stuff working, especially around uh, pipe, wire, pipe wire and uh, D-Bus. So thank you for that. I appreciate the, the great learning resource. Okay. Um, read line. Read dash, read care. Okay, so we got the typical stuff. I believe it's uh, R delim is the R delim. All right, let's execute that. Now, can you give me completions on read dash? No, not going to help me at all, huh? That's great. Okay, so read dash line. Not going to show up either, eh? Cool. That's great. Maybe I should enter the uh, the namespace. So what is it? Geyser module edit module at point? No. Uh, sway. Geyser. What is it? Switch. Switch. Repl switch to module. Sway. Boom. Okay. 
comma M, fine, whatever, read line. Okay, so then uh, let's do this. EOF, is that, is that what sway message actually does? Let's go to the eShell buffer and say sway message help. Okay, so it does give output, so clearly that's not right. Gun says the Emacs from Scratch hoodie is a straight jacket. Well, yeah, could be. Optional port. Uh, do, oh, do I actually need to say port? No. Info. All right, so now we got that. It's not working, obviously. Child standard output is the pipe, and the standard input is inherited. Do I have to do anything special for the pipe? Open input pipe. Uh, oh, okay. Here's an example. Great. And then you can use uh, read line. All right, fine. Input pipe. Uh, yes, let's try this. Still EOF. Interesting. So open output pipe is to be able to write to the process, I believe. And then uh, open input pipe. Maybe I should just keep it open. It's not working though. I wonder if it can actually open the program. Is there another way to get the, um, the result of this? Or is it is are they writing things to standard error? Is that what's happening? Um, let's try something else. How about this? T get outputs. Come on now. Huh. All right, that's something. It only read one line. It needs to read everything. So can I? Let's see. Info, uh, well, what if I go to API reference? No, 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 no. We're gonna go back to uh, procedure index and we're gonna look at read line. And then see if there's one for reading everything. Seems like there should be, but. Um, the solution here then would be Let's see, define, uh, execute, sway message. And then what we'll do is uh, say port, open input pipe. In this case, we can say command, whoops, and that's wrong. And we're gonna do a string append. This is obviously not the best way to do this. We're just doing it live. All right, so now we got a port here to read from. And then I can also have uh, an output, which is just an empty string to start with. I guess this whole thing could be the loop too. So let's make that a loop. And now uh, we will say uh, set output string append output uh, and then read line port well actually let's not do that yet let um line so if is it like what eof question mark EOF, or is EOF object? EO, come on, come on. EOF dash object. There we go. If EOF dash object line, 
then uh, we're going to return the output. Otherwise, we're going to do the other thing we were doing before. So let's just do the set. Lovely mutable state management. All right, so now instead of what we did before, let's do this execute sway message. T uh, get outputs. Unspecified, let's see, what did I do wrong now? Open input pipe. Oh, uh, that's a mistake. This needs to have a space. Actually, let's execute that and then execute this. Unspecified output. Oh, I never looped. Of course. Begin. And then uh, loop port output. In fact, I could do this. Instead of doing that set, I could just do a nested little call on that. There we go. Now we will run this display again. Hey, it's not there. Let's make sure that what we're doing is right. So I can say display. I just want to make sure that this is uh, what I expect it to be. Uh, did it write anything out? Okay, sway message T get outputs. That's great. <laughs> Andrew says, look, take a look at my Mastodon PM. Uh, let me pull up a, pull it up on my other screen. Uh, I don't actually have it logged in at the moment. Read delimited port will do what you want. Can I see? Let's see. Maybe you're right. I shouldn't have to write this myself. Ah, read text until one of the characters in the string delims is found or into file is reached. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Musex. So let's try this instead. Instead of doing this really stupid thing that I did here, let's try uh, read uh, delimited open input pipe. Uh, same thing here. Now, the delimiter list takes the same uh, values as for read line. Where is it? String delims. Where is that? Oh, yes. I don't want it to do anything. I want it to just to, to have no delimiters because I want it to read to the end. You need the empty string two in the middle. Thank you. Yes. All right. Let's just leave it like that. And let's see what this does. Boom. There we go. There's the output. So we have the uh, output information. That's interesting. Hmm. That's not the format that I expected to see, actually. Let me check the console for that. So sway message. Get outputs without the T on it. Let's see what it says. Whoa. Unknown valid command. Okay, so maybe that dash T is necessary. So it's, it's giving me output in a sort of readable format here. But when I run it this way, it's giving me a structured format. And I don't think it's giving me the same information, is it? Type output, orientation, none. Okay, it gives me the resolution. The name. Okay, so it is the information that, that I'm looking for. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, there's a JSON library for Guile that I could use to read this stuff into um, A lists. I wonder if it's already in here. Probably not. It would be very convenient if it was, though, because I don't want to have to be dealing with installing packages right now, but I may not have a choice. Um, yeah, if I set up buffer env, it might work. So uh, manifest.sem specifications to packages list guile json. I don't know if this is going to work. Yes. Okay, so it seems to have done something. 
Let's go to the REPL, which may not actually work. I may have to restart the REPL after doing that. So uh, REPL restart, geyser restart REPL. There we go, cool. Hey, what happened? Exit status one. All right, probably, come on, buffer, come on. Buffer, A. Hey, come on. Let's go back and do this the right way. Manifest that SCM specification to packages or spec specification to package. Let me check how I'm doing it on another project. How about that? Do I have it in this one? No. No. Uh, let's take a look at this repo. Uh, manifest the SEM specifications to manifest. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Stop. Stop it. This thing keeps nagging me helpfully. It's like, hey, do you want me to uh, to load your manifest file? Yes, yes, yes. Status one. All right, let's try this at the shell and make sure I'm not doing this wrong. Stop, dude. Be term. That's a blank bash prompt. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Okay, so um, geeks shell dash m manifest.scm. I probably have a syntax error or something wrong. That I for manifest. Cool. Great. Love that. Get it over with. <laughs> Stop. Uh, use modules form unbound variable. Do I really have to? No, I don't have to pull that in. Specifications to manifest. Jesus. I, I'm sorry that you have to watch me fight with stupid things. Yes, thank you, Musex, try, for trying to save me from myself here. All right. All right, now it's fine. So let's get out of here. Get out of here. And I will restart the REPL. Okay. So let me see. Um, you. Or is it use? I don't know. Uh, Guile, no, is it JSON? Just plain JSON? Okay, cool. JSON what? JSON SCM. Okay, cool. Now let's go back here. See, we're getting somewhere. This is obviously not the best way to spend my time, but it just gives us an indication that uh, we can read in information from Sway and do something with it, so that's cool. Okay, so we have execute Sway message, get outputs. I'm gonna do something really, uh, uh oh, really dumb here. I thought I saw the uh, the stream going down, and uh, passes directly through JSON to SCM. I don't even know if this is the right way to call this function, but we're gonna do it. Uh, unbound variable execute sway message. I need to uh, re eval this function. 